fundamental instrument of the the retreat which you are going to learn and it's going to benefit through all through and then actually then the other things you will learn as well but this is one of the um, the thing which is the easiest one really of amongst those four so how do you begin and how do you do this muraqaba firstly the first thing which you do is that you come into the presence of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that allah jalla majdu knows everything he knows me he is with me he's seeing me he's hearing me he knows everything my all weaknesses my all sins my all good things bad things everything my finances my health everything so presence of allah means that you think about allah azza wa jal or his qualities any of his qualities if they come in your mind this means that you are somewhat in presence so this is point 1 at mean you start with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's name bismillah arrahman arrahim you and then recite astaghfirullah mean asking forgiveness from allah jalla this is the beginning of everything because if a person is not pleased with you it's no matter saying i want this i want this i don't want this you are i love you i want to have good relationship with you when the person is displeased outrightly with you that is why one should firstly be in state of repentance and forgiveness that is one mistake which people do when they visit the prophet ali sallallahu alaihi wasallam they straight forwardly get on to for example uh, when they visiting madina tul munawwara Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam pray for us Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam do shafa'a for us or anything but they don't know how much rights they have violated all this life of the prophet ali sallallahu alaihi wasallam it's like you have not listened to your mother or your father you've been disrespecting or not carrying out their instructions all your life and now you go suddenly to their house mother cook food for me do this father give me this etc and the mother father are not pleased with you because you violating their rights or anything like that so the first thing which a person should go is natural to go to the prophet al islam firstly to ask forgiveness from him of the rights which i have violated in my life before i i came there so with allah jalla majduhu as well you start with three times istighfar then three times uh, durud sharif durud e salat al ibrahimiya or any other durud sharif you can recite and three times la haula wa la quwwata illa billah this is very very important as i said the mostly it is read but less it is understood and there lies one of the keys la haula wa la quwwata you are not relying upon your power might you are as though referring everything back to allah jalla majduhu to allah bi da so many people will come here oh, i can't achieve this i said yes you can't but allah can do that for you that's what you are so allah can do that and allah will do once you have good relationships so you just do what you are instructed and allah azza wa jalla will do it for you you don't have to worry even when prophet ali sallallahu alaihi wasallam went on the night journey ascension allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not mention the quran the prophet ali islam went there he said subhan allazi asra bi abdihi he is 
pure, beyond any defects, who? Alladhi, the one who took his servant from Masjid al-Haram to Masjid al-Aqsa. So Allah Azza wa I am the doer. So if he took the Prophet والسلام, for us as well also, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will do. Not that I will go. I will. So this builds encouragement and hope in you. Okay, I can't do it. But my Lord can. The all powerful, he can, if I fulfill. So, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Now listen to the methodology very care because you are going to do it after a few minutes. So, <clears throat> so presence and you have come here. Next you are going to think about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's name as though it is illuminating, shining, in the whole of the skies, a very big name like the sun, I was it, in the sky, in the heavens. And from that name, the noor, the light, because as Allah subhanahu wa Allahu nuru samawad, Allah is light of heavens and earth. His name is also light of heavens and earth. Allahu Nuru Samawat where Nur is coming emanating from there and coming towards your head as it's shown here. The Nur is coming towards your head and inside your head the head becomes illuminated with the name of Allah Jalla Majduhu and starts repeat your head starts thinking, repeating the name of Allah. And the light is penetrating from the name of Allah Jalla Majdu. From the head, the light is penetrating towards the heart. And the heart is darkened, but when the light comes, like a bulb switches on, and there you are, your heart also switches on with light. And that's also shining with the name of Allah Jalla Majdu. All of you can see? Okay. If you cannot, I don't mind you sitting in such a position here, there. You can even move left, right, actually. <coughs> because you are going to follow that. So it's better that you have a full view of it. So from the heavens to the mind and the mind to the heart, heart also illuminated with the name of Allah Azza wa Jal. But uh, the heart starts chanting the name of Allah, but it's actually in reality, it's not only the heart, but everything is glorifying Allah, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, يُسَبِّحُ لِلَّهِ مَا فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَمَا فِي الْأَرْضِ Whatever is in the heavens and earth is glorifying the name of Allah. Is glorifying the light. It is only we human beings sometimes become in ghafla or heedless, forgetful the creation. So all the creation, every as you can say, every star, every planet, every cell and every atom in the universe glorifying Allah Jalla Majduhu. So you see now there is a link starting from the um, presence of Allah then you because we cannot in this world at least we cannot see Allah Jalla Majduhu in paradise, in Jannah, in heavens people will be able to witness at their level but here we can visualize the name of Allah Jalla Majduhu and that light from that name coming towards the mind from there to the heart, from the heart to all the body and every cell and then to all, so everything, every tree, every uh, petal of a flower, every branch, 
every leaf, every star, everything, they are glorifying Allah. So this. So this is the beginning. This is the the scene of beginning. This is the beginning of the muraqaba. But what you are going to do inside, I'm going to mention now. <coughs> All together, it's one thing to, with beginning, which is the presence of Allah, and one thing to end. And there's five things in the beginning, uh, in the middle. So all together it's seven. So now, so understand, this is the sequence. So seven things totally it entails. Number one, you already know, presence of Allah, what it means. Allah is with me, watching me, seeing me, hearing me. Then thinking all of the, <coughs> this idea, this image of the name of Allah and the name of Allah as the Vajal light illuminating, penetrating to your mind, to the heart, to the, and then everything. Now, your part comes in the communication, in the muraqaba dua, what do you do? In muraqaba dua, you do first thing, you bring into your mind seven, those type of sins which you think are the most serious which I have done in my life. Everyone, Knows I don't need to tell you, you don't need to tell me. How much they're serious, Allah knows better, but at least what I think is, is was the most bad <coughs> or worst thing which I did in my life. One, and then bringing that into mind, feeling shameful, regretful, that in the presence of Allah, in the kingdom of Allah, I did this so heedless. Allah created me and I used my body, my mind and heart against the one who has given me. How unthankful I was. So asking Allah for forgiveness, but not from through the tongue. This is muraqaba, that's why it's called muraqaba. It's not, you're not saying now anything through the tongue. Now the communication goes through the heart. The heart speaks. When I will, for example, be leading or someone is leading them, they might speak through the tongue, they might do any zikr, they might recite any verse of the Quran, <coughs> which refers to the sins <coughs> and forgiveness. But you are not going to you are, let the tongue of the heart speak. Because this tongue is dubious type organ. It can say things in correct manner, it can say things bad. It can lie and it can also tell the truth. But the tongue of the heart, the beauty is, it always tells you the truth. It doesn't lie. So when it doesn't lie, it's always truth. So why not to communicate with Allah with something which is always truthful, <coughs> always pure. After that, seven sins you have brought in your mind, ask forgiveness, then as you can see, you bring in your mind, I am not saying anything, that's what you should bring it, but I'm saying seven favors which you think you have been blessed. We have millions and billions favors. But the seven most one by one you think you've been, oh, you have this blessing, it's a great, it's a great favor of Allah Jalla Maitu. Oh, you have this favor, it's Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. So one by one you bring and then you think that you do not deserve it, how Allah Azza wa Jalla has been compassionate with you and you be thankful from the heart to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. So seven of them. Then, thirdly, seven needs. Now you know better what you need, <coughs> what are your desires, what are your dreams. People have dreams, they have not been fulfilled. People have desires, they have not been fulfilled, lawful. People have even needs, they have even wants. They are still unfulfilled, they are trying but they are not fulfilled. They wish. <coughs> From the king to the beggar, they have certain desires, certain wants. You must have as well. Someone might want to get married, simple as that. They can't, they are not getting married. Someone wants to start a business. Someone wants Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Someone wants 
to be successful in akhira someone wants children someone wants work someone wants success in exam whatever your need seven most at the moment which are the most dire needs of you so one by one and you ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through the heart then this one has seven most pressing problems difficulties things which are agonizing things which are painful things which are worrying har ek ke paas hoti everyone have things which they are worried about problems difficulties there are so many things but you bring seven of the most things which affect you which you think is most worrying for you is more which you keep thinking day after day and then seven of those decisions or where you need to make a decision and you don't know what to make you need guidance on the decision every day life or important decisions of life you need to make but you are not sure you need to move to another country you want to <coughs> follow a path of to allah subhanahu wa taala you want to do a course you want to marry who to marry you want to do a business decision you want to do travel decision or or whatever so you see guidance on seven matter and lastly reliance upon allah subhanahu wa taala i'm going to explain to you that so very briefly again first is the presence of allah which means thinking of allah azza wa jalla is with me watching me and thinking of all that idea that image of the name of allah and the light coming towards the head and the heart and then everything secondly quickly seven great sins major sins which in your sight are major think about seven big sins that you have committed in your life and present present one sin at a time <coughs> in the presence of allah subhanahu wa taala and ask for it. thirdly seven great blessings and favor think about seven blessings that allah azza wa jal has bestowed upon you remember one blessing at a time and be thankful to allah azza wa jal with the heart number 4 7 pressing needs dreams desires how much i have dream they dream day dream and night dream which is not been fulfilled which they like to well they are using useless meaning means when they just thinking that thing is going to happen uh, if if even if they employ means it can't happen until allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will so why not present it to the one who has all power to fulfill who can change things who can make the dead living and fifthly the seven problems i am struggling with that is why we are depressed because we are trying to solve our own problem in our own way keeping in our mind and then furthermore six think about seven big decisions <coughs> or where you need guidance present it and the seventh one as i said is very important one <coughs> at the end combine and put all of them into the box of tawakkul so you don't leave them there you you are need you are concerned you are problems you are worries you are sins and all these things you what you do at the end you as though put in a basket and present it to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala oh allah you said you love the one who relies upon you i am putting all these things here and assigning them to you tafwif wa fawidu amri ila allah tafwif you given it to allah you taken it out from your heart taken it out from your mind 
and given it to Allah Jalla Maidu who to deal with it. Wallah, I will not think and worry about it. I will think about you. I will remember you and do what actions I am required, what you have commanded me to do. But I'm not going to worry about them as such. All my matters I have assigned to you. I've done whatever I could. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, مَنْ يَتَوَكَّلَ عَلَى اللَّهِ فَهُوَ حَسْبُ Whoever relies upon Allah, Allah says me, I am sufficient for him. But we never rely upon Allah. We keep it in our head and mind. That's why like pressure cooker, they are actually under pressure and depressed. You just stress and depression many people have is because of this. They're keeping it in their head. And head has limitation. It's like a pressure cooker and a lid on it. Or other there are problems, there are desires and things, and underneath is the f fire of the test, which actually is making it more heat. <coughs> the heat is increasing, and now they are like snoozing around, like actually the pressure cooker making different noises and sounds are coming, which other people can hear. Sometimes they are weeping, sometimes they are crying, sometimes they are or you can see their faces are actually can know that there's something seriously wrong. They have money, they have their eating enough, they have, but still it seems they've lost everything, someone who just lost everything. <coughs> That's what they do. And the reason, there might be other reason, one of the reasons is that they're keeping things with, with themselves and not entrusting them to Allah Jalla Mahal. So that's, oh, I am worried about my health. I am worried about my children. I am worried about this. I am worried about this. I am worried about this. And Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says, that one of the benefits of being my friend is, Allah inna awliya Allah, la khawfun alayhim wa la hum you see, when you, the king says you are his friend, you don't need to worry about where you are going to pay bills from, where hospital bills will be paid, where you are going to go, where your holiday will be paid, where your children will go to school, what happens if you become ill, what happens if you need something. Being friend of the king has many, many benefits. Sometimes that's why people like to be friend with the politician, they might fulfill their need. Sometimes they make friends, or those, those might fulfill something of them. But leave all these, Allah Azawajal said, Allah inna awliya Allahi la khawfun alayhim wa la hum yahzanun. Ke meri dosti ka ek fayda hai, ke na aane wali kisi cheez ka khawf hoga, wa na kisi or cheez jo jane wali uska gham hoga tumhe. Ye ek fayda hai. This is one benefit of the reliance upon Allah and the friendship of Allah. Isli again, awliya Allah have concerns, but concerns do not stay in them. Like uh, Usman will be mentioning to you further, maybe today or tomorrow, these states, these emotional states come in the person. They possess you like a spirit. जिस तरह जिन कब्जा कर लेता है ना बंदे पर इसी तरह ये परेशानियां और गम भी कई लोगों पर वो वो उन्होंने कब्जा किया हुआ है जिन तो आए या ना आए दे आर पोजेस्ड बाय दीस इमोशन दे आर डिजायर दे फुली पोजेस्ड बाय बस नाउ दे आर डिजायर वॉकिंग वॉकिंग डिजायर वो परेशानी द स्पिरिट ऑफ द you may say the problem has possessed them now. And it stays there, obviously it will harm you. What happens with awliya Allah is that it comes. They are concerned, many worries come there. All of these tests come at a very higher level to them. <coughs> to anbiya and awliya, these are at very, very high level. But why doesn't or you may say it concerns it with such a level that khawf and huzn, the fear and the concern 
raises in them, why they don't become depressed as such. They don't let them, these things stay. As something possesses, it comes, they let it out as well. They have an outlet. It comes in their mind, it comes in their heart, <coughs> but they have an outlet. Who is the outlet? Outlet is the power of Allah, infinite power of Allah, the ocean and the mercy and the power of Allah. Wo Allah ki taraf kar rahe hain. Ham Allah par bhrosa kar rahe hain. Ham Allah par jo hai chhod rahe hain. Allah hamara mamla durust karega. Wo jo bhi hai ham uski raza me razi hai. We are pleased with whatever he he. No, there is no one who is in our welfare more than Allah Jalla Majdu. So why I need to worry too much? So they have worry to some extent, but they send it further. So isliye. They have concern, they have worries, and they don't have how they actually take how <coughs> It is like uh, you eat, when you eat and when you drink, there is a system Allah Zubjal created. The beneficial things stay in, the poisonous things are extracted out of the body through going to toilet and things, and if they stay in, Although you've eaten apples, you've eaten fruit, or you've eaten whatever, healthy food stays in, it won't be healthy for you. It will change into poison, be it actually liquid or actually solid food. But if, you, if the system is working, the liver is working, the kidneys are working, you are eating. Yes, the poisonous terms, things are there, but there is a system to flush them out and you do that and alhamdulillah whatever life you have. Now many of you are closing their eyes. I fear these people are going to miss. If you are sleepy, go and sleep. If you are wakey, stay awake and sit there. I don't want people to sit in muraqaba here. When ki bari aayegi, then muraqaba karna hai. Because I want you to be here, not on the earth shore somewhere. But I am teaching you. So when the time comes, then you make the flight. So now stay, stay away. And because person doesn't have control, so many people maybe have come from work, many people are not used to this routine. So for simple reason for them is to go and have good sleep. At least they are satisfactory sleep, though. They'll be ready for that. And they can listen to the recording or whatever. But obviously, ye, ye, ye. so ye retreat I like commando training. It's not a picnic type thing. That's what intensive retreat means actually. It's a commando training. <clears throat> the people are training to you to be good soldiers, commandos. And you know, I want to eat, I want to sleep. I finish sleepy. They will just throw you, you know, good commando. For command, okay, you can be a normal soldier or just sit in the house and protect your family. That's it. So, that's ready, okay. It is that's the mindset you should have. Spiritual retreats of the Mashaikh, especially. It is not much strict, but even they are like more like a martial arts, spiritual martial arts training. You are not forced to actually. No, okay. You can just pray five times and abstain from the major sins and mashallah have good beliefs and you're on your way to Jannah, simple as that. But if you want to taste and see what awliya Allah go through and what they experience and the raise higher levels, then obviously there is some effort required. So actually, that's why I mentioned sleep at the time of sleep and stay awake. Even you, no one, even for example, you are not getting to sleep, but lie down. Now after one hour or so again, you will be, after breakfast, you are going to sleep for about five, six hours. So don't think this is your free time <coughs> doing this and your amal. Koi amal aapko kani, yehi sa sare amal hai. These are the amas, actually. Whoever done the masnoon as kar, it's as though they've done been in dhikr all day now. Because the Prophet Islam said so, these are the certain virtues in the prophetic as kars. Sone may be ibadat 
uh, that is a worship as well. But the mindset you should have is anyway. The last thing which you do is bring everything together, put in the basket like here it is shown, uh, and take and give it to Allah Jalla Majdu to deal with it. And what you do, Allah deals with that. And what do you do? You be in remembrance of Allah Jalla Majdu. Easy thing. So these are the seven <coughs> things in one uh, number wise. So summary, uh, um, as you've seen, it all begins with the name of Allah Jalla Majdu, the presence of Allah, the light coming to the uh, head, and the name of Allah Jalla illuminating there from there to the heart, illuminating in the heart, from there to hold the body and cells and hold the universe and all the th th things are doing. So this is uh, muraqaba of dua, which um, we have gone through. So, so this is what the theory. So now, now we are going to do practice. And if you want, now you can close your eyes as well when I say. And when the time comes, when I say, but if you want to keep them open, that's up. <coughs> so now, inshallah, we will be doing a short session. This uh, practically, this is was the theoretical part. As I said, this is the like uh, breakfast of the retreat. This is the easiest part, meaning murakabai dua. Then there will be main meals coming. Um, Zohar time main meal, ek to physical main meal, and then spiritual main meal as well, and then etc. etc. <laughs>